County authorities have lifted their shelter in place in Cottage Grove as they continue to search for two armed suspects that have shot at police. Plus, it's officially back to school for some kids in our area today. We'll take a look at how parents in Rock County are trying to navigate this new experience. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We want to get started right away this morning with a developing story. Right now, there is an active manhunt happening in the village of Cottage Grove this morning. This tweet from the Dane County Emergency Management went out just before 1230 this morning, warning of armed and dangerous suspects in that area. Gabriella Becerra is live from Cottage Grove right now with the latest from authorities. Gabby, what can you tell us? Hi, Josh. Well, the Dane County authorities are now telling us that the shelter in place is no longer necessary as the danger they believe is out of the area. But the search continues for these two armed suspects. Now, we've seen police search this area and the car that's currently being towed away uh, just in the past hour. And so they're searching for two suspects. One, they say, is a man in his late 30s with blonde hair and blue eyes. And the other is a woman approximately 30 years old with brown hair and brown eyes. Now, officially say the f search first or what happened last night at 1130 was a traffic stop and then it turned into a chase in the town of Pleasant Springs that ended here in Cottage Grove. The two suspects took off on foot and they are believed to be armed. Police say that they shot at the officials last night, but no injuries have been reported. Again, so the perimeter has been taking down. They're limiting their search, but officers and leads as they get more information and we'll continue to update you as we learn more and on our website channel 3000.com. Gabrielle Becker live in Cottage Grove this morning. Gabby, thank you. Also breaking this morning, we have new information on the shooting death of a Milwaukee police officer. Milwaukee police say they were called to a shooting just after six last night. NPD says the victim was 35 years old and was employed by them as a community service officer, but no other identification. A 65 year old man from Milwaukee is in custody for that shooting. It's unknown if the officer was on duty at the time of the shooting. Police say they think this started as an argument between neighbors. That investigation ongoing right now. Protests are continuing into their second week in Kenosha ahead of the president's visit today. But the planned visit is drawing some mixed reaction from locals. After days of peaceful protests, some are now concerned the president's presence could lead to more division and destruction. Others are glad the president is focusing on their community. The president of the United States is coming. I want to feel like I feel more safe, and I unfortunately don't feel that way. It means a lot to me. He's just showing the support, and I think we need that. He's our president. you got to respect that, right or wrong. Now, Kenosha's mayor also commenting on the president's visit. He says right now the city needs times to heal and wishes the president would put off his visit until the city has time to do that. I would tell you, though, that I'm disappointed that he is coming. Uh, our community has gone through a great deal, and there is no time right now for political politics to be played. The president is always welcome, but at this time, it's just the wrong time. Right now is a time for us to heal. The White House has not said when the president will arrive in Kenosha. We do know that the president plans to meet with local law enforcement, local business leaders, and survey property damage. The White House says the president will not be meeting with the family of Jacob Blake, though. The president says the family wanted to speak with him, but they wanted their lawyers present. For that reason, President Trump says he decided not to speak with them. Blake's father, though, says he doesn't know who the president spoke with and doesn't care. Blake's uncle says he has no interest in speaking to Trump anyway. We'll have full coverage of the president's visit both here on News 3 Now and at channel3000.com. 6.03 right now. Let's check in with Hattie for a look at your first worn weather forecast on this Tuesday morning. Beautiful start out there, but some might say it's just a tad bit chilly. Yeah, I actually brought my jacket this morning on the way into work. It is a little cooler outside. Skies are mostly clear, though. 48 degrees here in Madison. Winds are calm. Sunrise occurring just before 625. 
5 this morning. Getting a little later each day, you're probably noticing that lack of sunshine in the morning. Here's a look at Doppler track, and it is quiet this morning, but may not be the case through the afternoon. Take a look at a wider view. You'll see some showers for southern Minnesota spreading in our direction. Also a cluster of showers and thunderstorms moving out over southern parts of Iowa. That is lifting northeast as well. All of these showers and thunderstorms will continue to move in that direction as this area of low pressure rides right along this cold front. That front is pretty close to us, so can't rule out some showers or even a few thunderstorms today across southern Wisconsin. Here's a look at our rain chances over the next 10 days. Relatively low this week. We have our chance today. Then it looks like most of the rest of the week will be dry. Heading into the upcoming weekend, though, Sunday into Monday, and then even the first part of next week, there will be chances for rain. Here's a look at your future track forecast. Before we get ahead of ourselves for the weekend, let's talk about today. Sunshine early this morning. Temperatures will quickly get back into the 50s. We'll be back around 70 by lunchtime, but at noon, you can see some of those showers starting to spread into the north and southwestern parts of southern Wisconsin. Those showers are possible through the afternoon and evening time frame. Looks like heaviest uh, chances for thunderstorms or best chances would stay south of Madison. Here's a look at total precipitation. Again, pretty light in most spots, but we could see some isolated higher amounts if you find yourself under one of those thunderstorms. Your extended forecast is pretty quiet through the rest of the week then. Highs in the low 80s tomorrow, back into the 70s Thursday and Friday. For the upcoming weekend, there will be chances for rain Sunday into Monday. Take a look at next week though. Highs only in the 60s as as we go through that first full week of September. So is it too early to drag Zach to a pumpkin patch yet? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know if the pumpkins oh, are ready. For you. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're ready to be picked yet, Leah. Chris, as a gentleman, is saying it for all the men out there. We don't need to go to the just, pumpkin just patches wait. this early. Just you know, maybe till the pumpkins are ready. Yeah, I, mine in my garden, they're still green. Yeah, or until October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. 606 now. It is back to school time in Rock County this morning. Families are waking up and getting ready for one of three scenarios, either all in person learning, all virtual learning, or a hybrid of both. Regardless of the teaching style, it's pretty much a new experience for everyone. Families preparing for the big return to the classroom have the normal back to school shopping list with a few extras like masks, sanitizers, and cleaning wipes, right? But how do parents and students prepare for the first day of school when the lessons come from their living room? Claire Gray says she's been studying her kindergarten son's schedule, testing technology, and using her guest bedroom as a workspace. We did, for us, create a space in our house that would be for virtual learning to kind of enable our kid to not... Um, you know, to have some separation and feel like it was a little more formalized. We have um, an iPad and the school provided it and we're actually working through setting it all up today. So there have been some hiccups. In Janesville, schools are asking students to check their temperatures before they arrive. A temperature above 100.3 or having any of the coronavirus symptoms means you're staying home for the day. State and county health officials confirm more than 520 new cases of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. Just under 10% of all cases remain active, although Mondays traditionally have lower testing and case counts. Public Health Madison and Dane County officials say the state's database was temporarily down on Sunday, which could have impacted those numbers. DHS officials say the positivity rate has dropped by more than three percentage points in the last 24 hours. 7% of new tests came back positive yesterday. The seven-day average is right around 8.2%. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci is setting a new key date for the U.S. to get the pandemic under control. Fauci says Labor Day weekend will help determine if the country can contain the virus in the fall. He says he has a great deal of faith that the American people will be safe in their weekend celebrations and that it's important we avoid a surge in cases like we've seen over other holiday weekends, particularly Memorial Day and the 4th of July. A global survey is out and it shows that 74% of people are willing to get a coronavirus vaccine. Ipsos conducted the survey for the World Economic Forum involving 20,000 people around the world. Country by country, the numbers are different. 97% of respondents in China said that they'd get a vaccine, while 54% of Russians are interested. In the U.S., two-thirds of those surveyed said that they would get a vaccine. The most common concern among Americans not interested in the vaccine 
is the possibility of side effects. Just about 6.09 this morning. Let's take a look at the roads. If you're heading out and about right now across much of the Madison Metro, really no delays to speak of, no crashes to report this morning. There's some good news. Just a couple slowdowns along East Washington Avenue as you approach the Capitol from the east side. As you take a look at your drive times, everything looking good. 65 miles an hour from uh, the interstate to John Nolan Drive. Take your own four minutes. John Nolan Drive also in the green this morning. That's your first warn traffic. 6.09 still ahead. Efforts to recall the governor and other top state officials. What organizers need to force that recall vote? That's when News 3 Now This Morning continues. Wild East Town Honda has clearance savings on over 400 new Hondas. Get 0% financing for up to 60 months on your favorite new Hondas at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. Hey, you guys gonna get started? We're just waiting for the activation fee. But I already paid for the day. Yeah, and then it's $100 to activate us. Activate you? Mm-hmm. What are you, a cyborg? It's crazy to charge people for things they already bought. I'm gonna get my wallet. That's why at US Cellular, we speak fair and never charge activation fees. Switch to US Cellular and get $700 off the latest smartphones with no activation fee. US Cellular, upgrade to fair. I want a client who comes in to feel comfortable and to know that their case is in good hands so they can relax and get on with their life as best as they can and let me do the fighting for them. That's how I want them to feel. Gingris Thompson and Walks. A1 Furniture and Mattress on Stoughton Road is now open. Family owned for three generations, the Canarella family offers the best prices, service, and selection in town. That's why we're A1. Locally owned and operated since 1980. What happens now? Now that the rents do, but they've cut your pay. Now that the virus has cost lives, but your health care costs too much. Now that our president has had months, but he still doesn't have a plan. What happens now? Joe Biden knows how to lead through a crisis because he's done it before. When our economy was on the verge of collapse, Joe Biden led the largest economic stimulus in a generation and saved millions of jobs. Now Joe Biden is ready to lead us through this crisis. He knows rebuilding our economy starts with fighting the virus, increasing testing, getting more protective gear for healthcare workers, and calling for mass mandates nationwide. As president, he'll get working families back on their feet by lowering healthcare costs and helping small businesses recover. So what happens now? We elect a president who will build back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Love getting prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh? With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales and rewards like fuel points, all for prices that are lower than the everyday low. So go ahead, get lower than low. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Wild East Town Honda has cleared savings on 400 new Hondas. Lease a new all-wheel drive CRV for $269. That's $269 and absolutely zero due at signing at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. Welcome back at 612 this morning. We're continuing to follow new developments out of Cottage Grove right now. Multiple agencies searching there for two suspects who are possibly armed. Gabrielle Becerra is live from Cottage Grove right now with the very latest. Gabby, good morning. Hi, Josh. In just the last 10 minutes or so, police kind of have left the scene. It's not necessarily the heavy police presence we saw this morning, but there was a car in this area where the police officer was sitting all morning, and that has now been towed away. Now, police say it's no longer necessary to shelter in place and that it's no longer dangerous. They are still searching for those two suspects, a man in his late 30s with blonde hair and blue eyes and a woman with uh, approximately 30 years old with brown brown hair and brown eyes. Uh, the police say they'll be staying in the area as they continue to get more information and follow new leads. Uh, but again, they say it is not dangerous at this time and that people are can leave their home safely. Gabrielle Becerra live in Cottage Grove this morning. Gabby, thank you. 613 right now, the Wisconsin Elections Commission will meet this morning to discuss and prepare for the upcoming general election. Big topic of the day will be security for the election. 
Items on the agenda include a voter fraud report, a voting equipment audit, and a voter felon audit report. The commission will also present how Wisconsin is ready for the November election. This meeting starts at 9 o'clock this morning. You can attend online. Governor Tony Evers, as well as Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes and State Attorney General Josh Call are all now facing recall efforts. The paperwork for all three presented to the Wisconsin Elections Commission Friday. Organizers of the efforts must now gather more than 668,000 signatures from eligible Wisconsin voters in the next 60 days to force a recall election. Madison Mayor Santi Rhodes-Conway will be out with her 2021 executive capital budget later today. Her focus appears to be on affordable housing. In fact, she's making that announcement outside the Grove Apartments. The mayor's office says the Grove is a good example of affordable housing inside the city. That press conference is scheduled for 11 this morning. Happening tonight, Madison City Council will be talking about the proposal to add a civilian oversight board for the police department. At the center of that conversation is a report by Alders that takes a closer look at the logistics. The work group met 10 times during a five-week period this summer, creating an ordinance that would officially create the board and identifying community organizations that will help nominate the members. More community control over the police is one of the demands from protesters here in Madison. Quarter after six on this Tuesday to September 1st, and that means we're talking all things fall, Chris Reese. Yeah, that's right, Josh. September 1st marks the start of meteorological fall. That's exactly where we are. And right on cue, I'm watching the upper air pattern for a shot of some cooler air that's likely to work its way on down. Now, this clock stops later on this week. Watch how we start to see at least the first touch of some of the cooler air, but it really starts to move in early next week, Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. That's when the air 5,000 feet up will be at its coldest and it may get even colder as we move beyond that. This sets the stage for below normal temperatures really going into September. Our normal high is 77 right now. By the end of the next 10 days, our normal high will be 74. Watch this. We get you towards Labor Day. Highs are likely to be in the 60s and the rest of that four Forecast features highs into the upper 60s or right around that 70 degree mark. But the reality is, as we look at the next first couple of weeks of your September, below normal temperatures are expected for a good portion of the United States of America. And then for us, all of September is expected to be cooler than normal. Now we expand this out a little bit. We look at September, October, and November, all of your fall, and we're talking the lower 48 as a whole are all looking at seeing temperatures that are above normal. At least the probability is greater for an above normal fall as opposed to a below normal fall. Now, Hattie, we have talked temperatures in the 90s all last week, or at least it felt like it was in the 90s. Multiple days where that heat index was around 100, so this is a welcome change to see some cooler temperatures. But we could be warm enough or warmer than average rather as we go into that fall anyway. That's true and we always like to see a nice long fall, right? <laughs> yes, we a do. A slow <laughs> transition into winter, but there is a taste of fall in the air this morning. You can feel it. It's a little bit cooler. There is some fog developing through the Wisconsin River Valley where visibilities are now at a quarter of a mile. That fog though is seemingly confined to those lower line spots in the area. Take a look, a wider view at what's happening around the area. There is a cold front that moved through yesterday, bringing us some rain, but some showers and thunderstorms will ride along this front. You can see the movement is towards Wisconsin, off to the north and east with all that moisture. So there's still a chance for a few showers or an isolated thunderstorm today. It is a small chance, but it's there in the forecast through the afternoon and evening. We're back to dry conditions by Wednesday morning. Here's our pet walk forecast. This is Louie in the town of Dunn. Louie, it's going to be 72 degrees at 3. There may be a few showers. I'm not so sure if he's a hep on a walk today or not. I was just going to say, I think he's going to take a nap today. I think so. A little buddy, maybe a little grumpy. Maybe this is what a lot, a lot of kids look like this morning as they I realize it's so. back to school. I think you're right. Thank you, Hattie. 618 now. The three largest U.S. airlines are dropping most change fees for the foreseeable future. Delta and American announced the change yesterday following United's announcement on Sunday. Airline executives say they know customers are grappling with uncertainty right now during the pandemic. They hope a commitment to flexibility will persuade more people to buy tickets. And Amazon packages flying right to your doorstep. A little closer to becoming a reality this morning, the FAA is granting the company approval to deliver packages by drones. Amazon says that's a big step, but they still need time to finish testing the drones. 
Amazon's been working on this project for quite a while. Seven years ago, they had promised to have a drone delivery service by 2018. Hasn't happened yet. No word on when the company is planning to move forward with actually using drones in the field. If it feels like you paid a little bit more for gas recently, you're probably right. AAA reports the national price of gas spiked about five cents to an average of $2.23. Uh, pretty much thanks to Hurricane Laura. Prices should trend back down in the week ahead as oil production facilities in the Gulf reopen. According to AAA, the national average is still 35 cents cheaper than it was this time last year. Well, Walmart's getting ready to offer a new membership program to shoppers. It's called Walmart Plus. It's expected to include unlimited free delivery on orders $35 or more. According to Walmart, customers will have the option of same-day deliveries on more than 160,000 items from groceries to tech to toys. Walmart Plus will also feature a new scan-and-go option for in-store shopping. It'll be similar to the one offered by Sam's Club. The program launches September 15th. The cost is $98 a year or $12.95 per month. Another subscription. You think we need one? They always say it's for free shipping, but you're paying $100 a year for that free shipping, so not exactly free. Stuff right? adds up after a while. My I goodness. Just a, a, a more encouraging for my wife to buy more. That's true. Yeah. Me too. Sign me up. Yeah. 620 now. The Milwaukee Bucks are off to a rocky start in their second round playoff series against the Miami Heat. The Bucks lost game one to Miami last night, 115 to 104. There you go. Chris Middleton led the way for the Bucks with 28 points, but Giannis had a bit of an off night. He finished with 18 points and 10 rebounds, but was just four of 12 from the free throw line as the Miami defense kept him in check. Marquette alum Jimmy Butler scored 40 points for the Heat. It's the second time the Bucks have dropped game one of a playoff series this year. They also lost game one to Orlando before winning four straight. So, not all is lost here. Game two is tomorrow. I got faith. I got faith the Bucks can turn it around. Me too. All right, 620 is your time, guys. We are continuing to follow the latest out of Cottage Grove this morning where multiple law enforcement agencies are currently looking for two suspects they believe to be armed. We'll have that coming up. And coming up in the next half hour, it is back to school for a lot of students this morning. We're going to hear from a mom on how she's getting her family ready for the start of an unusual semester. Stay with us. With a nursing degree, helping others went from a job to a career. The Golf Range and Suites of Vitens Golfland provide safe fun. Golf Range buckets and balls are sanitized after each use, and high-touch areas are regularly sanitized. Full grill and bar service is provided safely to your golf suite by waitstaff. Try fun, easy-to-play top tracer games like Go Fish only at Vitens Golfland. Hey, Culligan, got a water pitcher for the fam. Pretty safe, huh? Uh, well, basic water pitchers are passable, whereas a Culligan reverse osmosis system can reduce lead, arsenic, pesticide runoff. It's not going fast enough. Just, just done with that. Home is dancing because no one's watching. Home is a reason to disturb the peace. Home is laughter. Home is where heads come to rest. A place to let go and a place to find again. At Stanley Steamer, we love home, and we know that a clean home is a healthy home. We're ready when you are. Habitat for Humanity of Dane County continues building and bringing stability to families through homeownership. As area families experience hardships, Habitat provides a pathway to financial security and independence. Strengthen our community. Support Habitat Dane County. Don't miss out on these great deals at Govan Cars Grand Opening Sale. You can buy 2016 or 2017 Dodge Grand Caravans well equipped for only $10,995 or $175 per month. That's right, buy a 2016 or 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan very well equipped starting at $10,995 or $175 per month. So just hurry in today and ask for my dad, Don the Dealman Govan. Or my daughter, Crystal the Pistol Govan. You gotta go to Govan. GovanCars.com I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. FDR lifted this country out of the Great Depression. Obama saved us from the great financial collapse. Trump faced the coronavirus pandemic and froze, paralyzed by denial and fear and indecision. It didn't have to be this bad, but Trump's lack of leadership cost lives, hitting seniors the hardest and devastating nursing homes. Donald Trump failed, and it's our seniors who are paying the ultimate price. Lately, we've found new ways to support and care for each other. And while every gesture counts, so too does every dollar. 
That's why American Family Insurance is returning $425 million to our customers. This includes a 10% savings for all current and new auto customers for the rest of the year. We hope this does your world some good and reminds you that supporting your dreams means the world to us. Contact your agent or go to AmFam.com to learn about more ways to save. By Tans Golf Land offers three award-winning 18-hole miniature golf courses, two outside and one inside, all open day and night. Have peace of mind. Miniature golf clubs and balls are sanitized after each use, and high-touch areas are regularly sanitized. Enjoy safe fun for everyone at By Tans Golf Land. Okay, it's the time of morning we always ask you to share your morning with us. <laughs> Looks like we're missing ours here, huh? Uh, it was beautiful. It was, it was a nice picture. Tammy <laughs> sent it in. You guys are missing out. I can picture you. it now. <laughs> yeah. It was a Just water picture. Imagine. Oh, oh. Maybe? Maybe. No, not today. No. <laughs> well, folks, this what does your morning, morning look is. like? Yeah, for real. <laughs> this is this is representative of the last couple. There it is. Hey, hey, there it is. Hey. Tammy, worth the wait. That's a beauty. <laughs> What's your morning look like? Use the hashtag my news three morning. Send it in. We promise we'll get through the technical glitches and get it on air for it's you. It's not even Monday. What the heck? Oh, it's yeah, it's not. It's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so we've made it to September, nine months into 2020, and we're looking for something to celebrate, yeah, right? Well, lucky for all of us, September has quite a few unusual holidays. Here are a few that you might want to participate in. Okay, first off, there's a few month-long observances. September is Better Breakfast Month. Love that. Self-improvement month and my personal favorite, International <laughs> Square Dancing Month. <laughs> Random. For As for the single day holidays, be sure to hit the snooze on the alarm clock on September 5th. That's Be Late for Something Day. Oh boy. September 12th, National Video Game Day and Chocolate Milk Day or Milk Shake Day. Not just Milk Day, Milk Shake Day. And September 28th is Ask a Stupid Question Day. <laughs> is the 5th uh, on a weekend? I was going to say. Like, it is. It's Saturday. Is the first. Yeah, Saturday. Oh, okay. no excuse for us. Can't be late to work that day. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> we can break milkshakes. The 12th is, oh, that's a Saturday, too. Oh. Man! Well, what good, can we good do on the fun weekend, on the show? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we do have a chance for some showers and thunderstorms later today during the afternoon and evening. All right, we'll be right back. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Lately, we've come to appreciate what home has to offer. Right now at Feldco, buy one window and you'll get one free, plus no interest for one year. That'll help keep your home and your family warm, safe, and comfortable all year long. That's something we've been providing for almost 50 years. Let Feldco get you ready for colder weather. Buy one window, get one free now. Buy one, get one free, and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for feldco Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Here, I don't look 61 in three weeks. Um, I have no wrinkles, no bags, and this is only because of Plexiderm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Who am I? I'm just in love with the mirror right now. Plexiderm is a wonderful product. I look at least 10 years younger. <laughs> it's a facelift in a jar. The people you're watching have just seen themselves in the mirror for the first time since we applied Plexiderm to their problem areas. Their reactions are real, and so are the results from using Plexiderm. What's even more amazing is that it takes less than 10 minutes. Now you can watch your under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet visibly disappear for just $14.95 by going to PlexidermTrial.com and taking the Plexiderm 10-minute challenge. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. And yet, when you look in the mirror, what you see necessarily isn't what you feel inside. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. This is really good. This is, um, I'm going to fill my bathtub with this stuff and get the whole body this time. <laughs> all these lines are gone. 
I feel like a new woman. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shale clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. At our $14.95 price, it's the best time to try Plexiderm and see it work for yourself. So if under eye bags make you look tired and older, take the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge today for only $14.95. Just go to PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. Call ASAP Heating and Cooling, serving the entire Spring Green area. Call and ask about a free estimate from Cardinal Heating Sum Prairie. It is the first day of school for a lot of kiddos out there. We're going to take uh, a look at how it's different for every family and break down the day for you and yours. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We want to start right away with some breaking news overnight. Two people are on the run from police in the Cottage Grove area and could be armed. Right now, we're learning the situation started in nearby Pleasant Springs around 1130 last night and turned into a chase that ended in Cottage Grove. The Dane County Sheriff's Office tells us several agencies, including Madison Police and State Patrol, responded to that cat crash. Our Gabriella Becker is live in Cottage Grove. Gabby, what are you hearing from authorities this morning? Hi, Josh. Just in the last hour, the Dane County Sheriff's Office tells us it is no longer necessary to shelter in place, but they're still searching for the two suspects. Now, Dane County Sheriff's Office describes the two suspects as a male in his late 30s with blonde hair and blue eyes and a woman approximately 30 years old with brown hair and brown eyes. And within the last hour and a half, police have said that the suspects did shoot at responding officers as they tried to get away. The officers put out spike strips, which forced the suspects to stop in Cottage Grove. Within the last 30 minutes, a car believed to be the suspects has been towed away. Officials have taken down their perimeter and traffic is flowing like normal, but police are staying in the area. I'll have more updates on Channel 3000 and throughout the show. Gabrielle Vaccaro live in Cottage Grove this morning. Gabby, thank you. All right, to our other top story this morning, it's back to school for a lot of kids in southern Wisconsin, and it will, of course, look different for every family. For any Dane County kids starting today, all students in 3rd through 12th grade will log on to their computers or tablets this morning to attend their classes. For younger students, it depends on the district. Madison schools, they start next week, and when they do, it will be entirely online. Edgewood High School started last week with a hybrid model. And in Rock County, it's mostly up to the parents. Unlike Dane, Rock isn't under orders to start school virtually, so many districts there are giving families the choice between all in-person, all virtual, or a hybrid model. Families going back to the classroom say they're stocking up on a new list of school supplies this year that includes masks, hand sanitizer, and cleaning products. Some families are opting for the all virtual start, like Claire Gray here. She'll be working with her son entering kindergarten to do daily lessons online. So I do think it's going to be an evolving thing and it might be fun for a couple weeks, but it might change the longer they go because they're going to get used to it. And with anything a kid does, you'll start to see more pushback the longer they do it. For those families opting for in-person classes, if students or staff going into school show up sick or have any COVID symptoms, their school will send them home. The student handbook says students are allowed five excused sick days per September, per semester rather, or 10 for the year. The USDA is trying to make it easier for schools to feed students. In a statement, the USDA says it's extending its summer meals program through the end of the calendar year. It says the extension will allow summer meal programs at schools across the country to continue serving those free meals throughout the fall semester. The USDA isn't commenting on extending the program any further for the entire year, though. In the Madison Metropolitan School District, there are 19 meal pickup sites. In an earlier investigation, though, News 3 now learned roughly 9 in 10 students who qualify don't use the program. The district wouldn't say why the usage rate is so low.
In Kenosha this morning, another curfew is in effect until 7 a.m. ahead of the president's visit later today. President Trump will visit the city more than a week after a police officer shot Jacob Blake seven times in the back. Governor Evers had asked him to reconsider over the weekend. In his response, the president tweeted that if he hadn't activated the National Guard, there would be, quote, no Kenosha right now. A clarification there, Governor Evers actually activated the National Guard a day before the president even commented on the situation in Kenosha. Protests, meanwhile, have been peaceful there over the past few days, but some local leaders are worried this visit could create more tension and worsen the situation in the city. Senator Ron Johnson, though, not one of them, he supports the visit. In a series of tweets, the Republican says it's sad to see the governor tell the president to stay out of Wisconsin. He says if protests aren't contained, they could turn into a siege, pointing to Portland and Seattle. He says it's time to support law enforcement and the citizens of Kenosha. Not on the president's itinerary for today, a visit with the family of Jacob Blake. The president says that he chose not to meet with them because the family wanted to involve lawyers. He says he could meet with the family at some point and gave his best regards. Ben Crump, the family's attorney, says it's standard practice for his clients to have legal representation when speaking with someone in the government. The president will instead meet with Kenosha law enforcement and survey damage from earlier protests. We have a crew going to Kenosha today to cover the president's visit. You can watch coverage here on News 3 Now at channel3000.com. Jacob Blake's shooting is pushing the Kenosha County Sheriff's Office to make changes for its deputies. The county executive says he will include funding for body cameras in the 2021 budget. That will be presented in October. From there, the board will decide whether to keep funding in the budget, and if it's approved, it would be adopted already in November, so two months from now. There are currently no plans for the Kenosha Police Department to implement body cameras. Closer to home, protests in Madison remain peaceful overnight. Urban triage led last night's demonstration, which lasted more than four hours. Community activists are frustrated with the lack of response from lawmakers to police brutality. Earlier in the day, senators did meet inside the Capitol for a special session on police reform. About a minute later, it ended with no action. Lawmakers are expected to address police reforms over the next few months, but there's no timeline for and when he or if legislative change may happen. 635 right now, Hattie McLean is keeping an eye on the radars. We've got another chance for rain today. We certainly do. Some showers moved through the area yesterday. All is dry across southern Wisconsin right now. But if you look to the west, you'll see a couple of areas of precipitation. The first one developing in southern parts of Minnesota. Another stronger one with some shower and thunderstorm activity in southern Iowa. Movement on this rain is to the north and east, so it is moving in our direction. And there is a chance for rain as we go through the day today. It'll be quiet this morning after lunchtime into the afternoon and evening hours. That's when our chance for rain returns to southern Wisconsin. You can see it's about a 20% chance, so not a guarantee by any means that you'll see rain today. Take a look at your future track temperatures. We are talking temperatures that will climb into the 50s by lunchtime today. It is going to be a, a little bit of a cool day, a little taste of fall in the air with temperatures right around 70 at lunchtime as we head into the afternoon hours, our temperatures will be back into the 60s already. Again, there will be a chance for a few showers or thunderstorms through the afternoon and evening here across southern Wisconsin. It's not going to be quite as cool overnight. Let's take a look at that Labor Day holiday forecast as we go into the upcoming weekend. Saturday looks dry with lots of sunshine and a mild start to the weekend. Highs in the upper 70s. As we head through the second part of the weekend, though, Sunday into Monday, that's when we start to see our rain chances return. Notice the cool down in the temperatures as well. Temperatures will top in the mid 70s on Sunday. By Labor Day Monday, we're talking high temperatures only in the upper 60s. So kind of a cool Labor Day for us here in southern Wisconsin. Just a slight chance for some rain. Here's a look at that extended forecast. That cooling trend will continue as well. We're talking highs in the 60s as we head through the middle of next week. A cool Labor Day, but it's also so late this year, too. That is true. Yeah, we're almost a week into September by the time we get there. All right, Hattie, thank you. 637 right now and breaking overnight. Milwaukee police are investigating the homicide of one of their colleagues this morning. Police say they responded to a shooting just after 6 last night. When they got there, they found the 35-year-old victim who was shot to death. 
The department says he's a community service officer who's worked there for four years. Milwaukee police say the incident started as a dispute between neighbors. It's still unclear whether the 65-year-old suspect and the victim were the neighbors involved in that fight. The officer and suspect haven't been identified yet. The Milwaukee police officer charged with choking a friend to death will head to trial. At Officer Michael Mattioli's preliminary trial, a judge determined there is enough evidence for the case to continue. The 32-year-old is facing a first-degree homicide charge for killing Joel Acevedo in April. Police say Mattioli put Acevedo in a chokehold during an off-duty argument at Mattioli's house after a party. Six days later, Acevedo died. Mattioli is currently suspended from the Milwaukee Police Department. A Milwaukee public school teacher could soon be out of a job for supporting the teenager accused of shooting and killing two protesters in Kenosha. William Walker is a teacher at Rufus King Middle School. In a Facebook post, he says he's glad they, quote, finally got rid of the two people killed in Kenosha and said he would have done the same thing. The post has been shared thousands of times. Former students say they're upset to see that. He's doing this behind a computer screen. What has he done in the classroom? The Milwaukee Public School District is aware of the post and says the statements made aren't condoned by the district and that Walker is no longer teaching until more investigating can be done. We could get an update on this developing situation during the district's first day of school briefing later today. And in Waukesha, at least two school district staff members have tested positive for COVID-19. The Journal Sentinel reports one works at Butler Middle School, the other works at Lowell Elementary. The district says there could be a third positive case at Higher Elementary. No students were in the buildings at the time when the staff members were infected. The district will have its first day of school today in a hybrid format for middle and high school students. Elementary school students will be all in person. 639, a check of the roads this morning as you're heading out this Tuesday morning. Things across Dane County looking pretty good. We'll take you down to Rock County this morning where kids are heading back to school. We'll kind of zoom in here on Janesville Milton. Looks like we're seeing some delays along Highway 14 just to the northeast of uh, Janesville this morning. We're also down to around 11 miles an hour on your Harmony at Highway 26 as you approach the interstate this morning. So keep that in mind if you're heading out. All the major drive times though looking so far so good. Average speed on the interstate this morning 73 miles an hour let's take a live look outside at 640 right now beautiful start out there a little crisp start to this september 1st hattie's gonna have more on the forecast and when we could use that umbrella today coming up but first you just heard josh it is september 1st already we want to say happy birthday to ainsley and all the kids turning three today thanks for celebrating with us here on news three now this morning have a great day Since 1902, Carrier has been inventing new ways to make people comfortable. And today, comfort can also mean efficiency. Because being more efficient with your home heating can mean spending less on it. And that's something everyone can get comfortable with. If you're ready for Carrier Comfort, now you can get cool cash rebates of up to $1,650 on a new system. Carrier, turn to the experts. Call your factory authorized dealer. General Heating and Air Conditioning, protecting your home and business since 1946. You were always the responsible one, so much like me, always taking care of everyone else. But this, this wasn't your responsibility. I already took care of the arrangements. The Ryans made it so easy. I didn't want you to worry about a thing. It's my last gift to you, my lovely daughter. time to develop treatments and vaccines. This is a marathon, not a sprint. A mask protects all of us. Our, our community, community, our nation. nation. Remember, Remember, we, not me. me. Together, we can 
prevent COVID-19. A message from Sauk Prairie Healthcare. It's in our nature. When you put money in a big bank, there it goes. But when you keep your money at Associated Bank, it gets invested close to home. It might become this family's renovation or help this little one's college fund. It could build local business or your favorite neighborhood spot. Because when you bank with Associated Bank, your money works in your community. All you have to do is make a simple choice. Send your money there or keep it here. Associated Bank. Your money works here. On the next Live Before, we'll talk with UW COVID-19 expert Dr. Jeff Potoff about the new vaccine test being conducted on campus. And Consumer Reports has advice on buying a new battery for your car. Accurate news as it happens. Right here, where you live. Information that you can use from the team you can trust. For more local stories that impact your life, News 3 Now. So a lot of kids are headed back to school today, whether that's virtual or in person. And here on News 3 Now this morning, we wanted to jump in on the fun <laughs> and show you some of our back to school pictures. First up is our very own Chris Stanford, Check ladies and handsome, gentlemen. That handsome little guy right Look at there. that grin. Look at that smile. <laughs> I believe this was uh, uh, coming off the bus, uh, first day of kindergarten. Buddy, you were TV ready from the moment I you know, were born. Is that your lunchbox? Oh yeah, uh, I believe, I think so. I don't know. I can tell. You can tell that obviously my mother dressed me that day. <laughs> Very like handsome. much of our, our folks would have done. You know, when we were at that age. But yeah, good times. Very cute. So you might recognize this one. Speaking of a mother dressing their kids. That's... Okay. Now, can I guess which one is you? Oh yeah. Okay. So <laughs> which sure. one? Which one am I? Uh, you're right. You yeah. You're one of the one of the pink. Yeah. And yeah. this crew knows I really don't like wearing <laughs> pink. I really hate pink. And mom, I love you, but I'm gonna blame you for that one. I wore a lot Barb, of pink when what I was you a do? kid. You'll see my socks match. I got the curly hair. Had a lot going on. That's my uh, girlfriend Kelsey, who's dressed very classy. If you ask me, I was one of the denim vest. <laughs> Shucks. You're still bitter? Yeah, I'm still stuck bitter in all the these years later about the bitter. Heavens, I hate <laughs> wearing pink. Mom, I love you though. You dress me, you dress me great. like a little Barbie. It was cute. And you'll recognize this guy. Some would say my face has not changed since Aww. then. Buddy. Baby face forever. Aww. Pooh, Winnie the Pooh is my favorite as a kid. I love Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I that love was. You. You're we so always cute. took pictures out in front of our uh, Spriter sign in front of our house every year. I think that was the year I might have missed the bus on the first day too. The bus like just kind of drove right by me. They didn't see oh, me. No. It was traumatic. I was, yeah. Did you cry after uh, this Of picture? course I did. Funny. I cried. And then I think my parents, they like caught up to the bus and I got on it later, but yeah. Aww. I'll never forget that. I'm scarred for life. <laughs> Poor Josh. <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh, and who's this? Uh, that looks like Jake. It's Jake. Oh, one of our producers, Jake. Cool, yeah. Is that a clear uh, <laughs> We are all just taking like, in this photo. Jake, you're a very cute little kid. Does he have a clear backpack? Clear backpack? Is that clear? Jake would have a clear backpack. He's a he's a smart guy. <laughs> so he's pushing the boundaries of fashion. And this is James, our executive producer. He's the one with the blue bow tie right there on your screen. Big shout out to his whole class <laughs> Look there, at that huh? bow tie. That is big. Oh my goodness. And our other producer, Ari, she's the one who put together the show you're watching right now. They she just she, she zipped her right find, ahead to graduation. Yeah, she couldn't find a back to school picture, so she's giving us her preschool graduation picture oh, instead. That's, that's Ari, cute. you are the cutest little girl. She's trying to show us up by saying that she finished school versus just the first day of school. Ooh. <laughs> Some shade this morning. Oh, that's Now, Hattie Ari. did not provide one. We do have to, we have to call out Hattie. Hads. I did not know I was supposed to bring in a picture. I yeah, was it was kind of a last minute guess. thing. So. <laughs> it was. It I was. use the same photo every year, so I've got it just in my camera <laughs> roll, ready to rock. Smart. I can tell you that I fell off the bus what? into a mud puddle on the oh, first day of no. school. No. You guys have the saddest stories <laughs> for that first day. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's stuff that you don't forget, too. Like, that's no. the thing is you think it's a kid, like, oh, they're fine, but you don't forget those moments. No, it's yeah. bad. And I, I rode the entire bus route on the way home because my mom said, just sit down 
down and shut up. The bus driver knows where you live. Don't say a word. And so I didn't say anything, and he never stopped at my house. Oh, no. <laughs> Traumatic. So I rode all the way back to the bus Gosh. station. <laughs> all right. Well, for those heading off to school today, happy first day of school, and the weather's looking pretty good, though. Yeah, not bad at all. There is kind of a taste of fall in the air this morning. Temperatures are a little cooler than they have been. Take a look at this graphic. Here's our temperature change. About 10 degrees cooler this morning in Madison than this time yesterday. To the north, those numbers are even larger. Here's a look at our actual air temperature, 48 in Madison, 47 in the Dells, 52 in Mineral Point this morning. So there is a little bit of a cool feel in the atmosphere. Future track shows you that through the day, you can expect some sunshine this morning, giving way to clouds this afternoon and even a few showers or some isolated thunderstorms. That chance for rain continues right into the evening. High temperatures today will be in the lower 70s. So not bad temperature wise. Yeah, thank you, Hattie, and happy first day of school, Don. All the kiddos out there who are yeah. heading back. Okay, 6.48 now. Coming up in the morning sprint, we are going to hear from Jacob Blake's uncle ahead of President Trump's visit to Kenosha today. And I'm live in Cottage Grove, continuing to track new developments on the search for two armed suspects. How that could affect your morning commute coming up on the morning sprint. Look Who's 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, indoor water park and conference center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Today, you can turn your home into a university, and you can turn a lasting career into reality. With Herzing University, you can earn a degree in today's hottest fields, anytime, online. Herzing is recognized, accredited, experienced, and transfer-friendly with more than 90% student satisfaction. For a limited time, we'll waive your enrollment fee. See what your career can turn into with Herzing University. I'm possible at Herzing. Call or click today. At Papa Murphy's, we need seriously, chop seriously, and shred seriously. Because we're serious about Tuesdays, even if you're not. Every Tuesday, get a large pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. Love getting prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh? With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales and rewards like fuel points, all for prices that are lower than the everyday low. So go ahead, get lower than low. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Medical bills. Missed time at work. Life-changing injuries household expenses. When you're the victim of an accident, it can feel like the weight of the entire world is on your shoulders. But we've dedicated our personal injury law firm to help take this crippling burden off your back. Habish, Habish and Rotier. We fight for what's right. A1 Furniture and Mattress on Stoughton Road is now open. Featuring affordable in-stock name brands for every room. With a huge selection that's hard to beat. That's why we're A1, locally owned and operated since 1980. Gar, ver, garver, gather, pig, gathering, garver, gathering, garve, her, ping, garvering. A socially responsible gathering where a maximum of 250 people enjoy thirst quenching drinks, delicious food, and the arts in a safe, clean, and touchless outdoor environment. Let's go garvering. Visit thegarverfeedmill.com for dates and details starting June 11th. Brought to you by News 3 Now, Madison Magazine, and the Garver Feed Mill. Pittsburgh Paints and Stains. The perfect paint for when the nursery becomes the bedroom. That becomes his room. That becomes your favorite room in the house. Paint because you want to, not because you have to. For results that stand up to whatever life brings. Trust Pittsburgh Paints and Stains, exclusively at Menards. Right now at Menards, get an 11% rebate on everything, including Pittsburgh Paramount Paint. Get the facts with Reality Check, only on News 3 Now. Welcome back. It's 6.52, time for the morning sprint. We start with our Gabrielle Vaquera, who's in Cottage Grove this morning, has pleached their search for two people on the run. Gabby? 
Just in the last five minutes, we've seen multiple police cruisers head northbound with their lights on on Main Street. Now, the two suspects they say are still missing. That's a man in his uh, late 30s with blonde hair and blonde eye, blonde hair and blue eyes rather, and a woman about 30 years old with brown hair and brown eyes. Now, within the last half hour. Um, they said the suspects did shoot at responding officers as they tried to get away. The officers put out spike strips, which forced the suspects to stop in Cottage Grove within the last 30 minutes. A car believed to be the suspects has been towed away and officials have taken down their perimeter and traffic is flowing like normal again. But police are staying in the area and will continue to update you on channel3000.com. It is back to school for a lot of students in southern Wisconsin today and it'll look different for every family. Dane County students, many of them in 3rd through 12th grade, will log on to their computers or tablets this morning to attend class. For younger students, it depends on the district. Madison schools start next week entirely online, but at Edgewood, it's a hybrid model. In Rock County, back to school mostly up to the parents. Unlike Dane, Rock isn't under orders to start school virtually, so many districts are giving families the choice between all in person, all virtual, or a hybrid model. If students or staff going into school show up sick or have any COVID-19 symptoms, their school will send them home. The student handbook says students are allowed five excused sick days per semester or 10 for the year. Go for laws, bills, and other things that will protect little Jakes all over this world. Jacob Blake's uncle is calling for legislative change to prevent police from shooting more black men. He says as bad as Blake's condition is, he is thankful his nephew is alive, something many other families can't say. Meanwhile, a curfew is in effect again this morning in Kenosha, ahead of the president's visit there later today. Governor Evers had asked the president to reconsider over the weekend. In his response, President Trump tweeted that if he hadn't activated the National Guard, there would, quote, be no Kenosha right now. Governor Evers had actually activated the National Guard a day before the president even commented on the situation. Not on the president's itinerary for today, a visit with the family of Jacob Blake. The president says he chose not to meet with them because the family wanted to involve lawyers. Ben Crump, the family's attorney, says it's standard practice for his clients to have legal representation when speaking with someone in the government. News 3 Now will have a crew in Kenosha today for the president's visit. You can watch the entire coverage all day on News 3 Now and at channel3000.com. Protests in Madison are remaining peaceful this week. Urban triage led last night's demonstrations, which lasted for more than four hours. Community activists are frustrated with the lack of response from lawmakers to police brutality. Earlier in the day, senators met inside the Capitol for a special session on police reform. About a minute later, it ended with no action taken. Republicans say the reforms up for debate will instead be discussed in a speaker's task force. There is no timeline, though, for when any legislative change will happen. A man accused of firebombing the city county building will be in court today. Police say Mark Juan Clark is one of the people responsible for throwing the firebomb during protests in June. There was originally a $5,000 reward for anyone with information leading to a suspect's arrest. We are seeing a major dip in the percentage of positive COVID-19 cases reported in Wisconsin. The most recent numbers from the DHS show 7% of yesterday's tests came back positive, three points less than Sunday. Dane County health officials say, though, the state's database was temporarily down on Sunday, which might have impacted these numbers. In all, Wisconsin has more than 75,000 confirmed cases of COVID. Less than 10% of those are still active. Final look at traffic, just about 6.56 this morning. If you're heading out right now, we are seeing some more delays on Park Street especially as you approach the Beltline and a few slowdowns on East Washington Avenue. So far, Beltline looking good, moving at posted speeds. That's your first warm traffic. And your first warm weather forecast starts with the visibility. In Prairie du Chien and Boscobel, visibility is down to zero. Quarter mile visibility in Lone Rock. So some thick fog developing through the Wisconsin River Valley this morning. Our temperatures are going to climb from the upper 40s and low 50s back into the low 70s this afternoon. There is a slight chance for a shower thunderstorm as we go through the second part of the day. Dry weather returns on Wednesday with a high of 80. Looking pretty nice right through the end of the week with high staying in the 70s. All right, Hattie, thank you very much. And thanks for joining us this morning, folks. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow.